vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. Welcome to another episode of Modern Mystics with me and my brother Nicholas. And um, this week we put a little poll out on Facebook and we just asked, we put several suggestions and asking for any input on maybe some topics that you wanted to hear. And it seemed like the number one topic was guidance. So I think we're going to start off talking about guidance and then see where we go from there. But I just wanted you to say hi to Nicholas here. Before we get hey started. everyone. Hi guys. <laughs> It's great to be here with you all. I'm just excited to be here with Andy. It's it's always a joy to just share this space with my with my dear brother. And and actually, I felt um, I really like the topic of guidance because as someone actually shared who's here for a devotional stay, this guidance was like this thing. Like I was like, what is this? And I, <laughs> And I wanted to experience it so badly. And, and when I somehow, and I think I was guided before, I, you know, it's like we've been guided the whole time. We just haven't known it really. But I, I found uh, one of the websites from Living Miracles at some point, which uh, just the way it was saying on there, I just could see like, wow, they are, they're living this. And that's, that's what I want. I want to live guidance. Like, but what is this? You know, I want to experience this. And so actually, as I could, as I've just been seeing <laughs> what guidance is, I've been being shown the whole time, but uh, yeah, I was actually guided then to come to this community, which I thought originally would only be for about three weeks. And well, <laughs> then it turned into four and a half months and then pretty much three years. <laughs> So it's been this it's been this great thing, but actually me and Andy and everyone from his community and, and others really it's like every day is is living the guidance, but but it's not been what I thought it was going to be. You know, there was this thought of guidance was this thing that I could just kind of activate when I wanted to and kind of use it in whatever situation I wanted to, like, okay, spirit. I'm going to go to this date and I'm going to go to the state with this person. So I'm going to choose basically all the specifics and then I want you to guide me after that. <laughs> and no, actually guidance is, and uh, we'll have more parables of these, but guidance is my experience at least. That's all I can really share is it's a surrendering. It's really this letting go of what I thought my life would look like in every moment of what I thought this day would look like, this show would look like. <laughs> all of it. It's like, I will step back and let him lead the way. And I actually just, I pulled up just before, cause I like doing this, like, what would you have me read even? And there was just this one paragraph. Cause I kept, I kept seeing the page numbers 238 in my mind. I was like, I have no idea what's on page 238. And at the very top, it said the Holy spirit stands at the end of time. This is in a course of miracles chapter. Yeah, chapter 13, the guiltless world and guiltlessness and invulnerability. The Holy Spirit stands at the end of time where you must be because he is with you. He has already undone everything unworthy of the Son of God, for such was his mission given him by God. And what God gives has already been. But to me, what that means is, yeah, it's like the script is written. Guidance is already there, but we just have to be willing to allow ourselves to, you know, to follow that flow, that flow of the guidance to find, you know, that experience of like, okay, yeah, I'm actually, I'm being source and it's, it's this development of trust. And I know Andy actually has this parable. He was, uh, that he has in mind that was on his heart that he was, he didn't want to share too much because he wanted to keep it fresh. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. You want to go ahead, actually? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to talk about how, you know, it's like the human condition is 
every day we're trying to survive and you're trying to figure out what to do next. And it's so stressful. Like being a human is so stressful because you're, you constantly seem to have to make decisions. And there seems to be so many hypothetical situations. It's like, I could do this. I could do that. I could do this. And it's so stressful. It's like, it's just a constant um, feeling of stress and a constant feeling of, I have to do things and make decisions because there's a future that's not going to happen unless I make those decisions. And I feel like that's why guidance is so important because guidance, it's to me, it's really listening to another voice than the egos. And, you know, it's like the human condition. It's like listening to this voice that's so loud in your mind where the, you know, it could be several voices and they're all chaotic thoughts and none of those thoughts really make you happy. And so basically Course in Miracles is helping you get in touch with a different voice in your mind a voice that it calls the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will guide you through time and space to lead you to uh, experiences and situations and places that are most conducive to healing your mind, which makes you happy. And so when you follow the Holy Spirit's guidance, and another word for the Holy Spirit's guidance is intuition. So when you start following that, then life becomes kind of like this beautiful stream like it's like you're laying in a river on your back and you're just being carried it's like you don't have to constantly try to think about the decisions you're going to make or feel the stress of all the hypotheticals like this could happen this could happen this could happen it's like you're just following your intuition and that's taking you exactly where you need to go and you feel so happy and you feel so relaxed because you're not really doing anything you're just allowing yourself to be carried through through life and it's just so beautiful. And I feel like a big question is, um, how, can I, how can I hear the Holy Spirit, you know? Or how can I hear the Holy Spirit's voice stronger in my mind? And in my experience, it's like the stronger my desire is to hear the Holy Spirit, um, the louder the Holy Spirit will be in my mind. And it's not always seemingly a voice. It could be signs and symbols in the world as well but I remember this one experience where I was going to the gym a lot and um, it was clearly guided for me to stop going to the gym at some point because it was a conflict of interest you know because I was reading the Course in Miracles it's like I'm not a body and I'm having all these experiences and then I'm going to the gym and I'm looking at my muscles and I'm like you know like, grow and yeah just focusing a lot on the body and it made no sense it's like the split was unbearable at, at a certain point but it was it, it seemed to be like my decision how long do I want to go with this split in my mind and the longer I went the more painful it was um, so I think at some point I was at the gym and I just felt I felt this prompt and prompt is like it's it's basically the Holy Spirit's trying to tell you what the next step for your guidance is if you want to listen. And I felt like this prompt in my heart about just go for a walk, like leave the middle of your workout and go for a walk. And for me, that was so strange because I had this like structured workout. It's like, do this, this, do this. And for me to leave in the middle of it was like, ah, you know, it was like that was to me to do that. But I, I felt the pain of not listening to the guidance. So I was willing to actually follow that and see what happens. So yeah. I actually follow that guidance and I walk straight out the gym in the middle of the workout. And uh, I just went for this walk, a beautiful walk. It was like, everything was green, the, the trees and everything, rather than this underground gym where it's like, you can't even see the sun. It's a very small <laughs> of, <laughs> of the ch choice that I was making to be there basically. And, and uh, yeah, I was just going for this walk and I, I, instantly felt so much happier and more peaceful and if anything that's a clear sign to me it's like okay now I'm on the right track you know it's like it's like these kind of experiences show us that it's like it's worth it to keep following the Holy Spirit and so I remember I was walking down this um this long sidewalk with all the trees and it was so beautiful and then each person that I would walk by I, I was just looking in their eyes and I would hear the Holy Spirit say uh see the kingdom in your brother and then i would just feel like this beautiful experience and i felt such a deep connection with every single person that i walked by and then and then i i felt how good that felt so i kept wanting to hear okay 
okay, Holy Spirit, I'm listening now. Like, I trust you. Mm. And then, uh, and then, so I kept following those prompts and I would walk through different streets. And then I remember um, I walked past this synagogue or something. And then when I walked past, Holy Spirit was like, turn around and walk by it again. I was like, okay. And then, so I, I didn't know what that was about, but then I walked by it again. And then I realized I had some judgments about the synagogue and um, the Jewish people and religion in, in general. So I realized that's why I was being guided to walk by it again. So I could see those thoughts and I saw them and I was like, oh, that's why you're guiding me here. So now I'm going to look at those thoughts. And I'm going to give those thoughts and beliefs over to you. And um, yeah, that was just one experience that I had that was just really beautiful. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Actually, you just reminded me that I had the very same sort of experience myself with working out because actually, I don't know if we ever talked about this at the time, but we were actually a bit competitive, like with working out, like how much do you deadlift? And then, oh, I've got to beat them. <laughs> this, is, this is before fully immersing in the course, but we were a little bit competitive, maybe like friendly competition, but there's still competition. And I remember, I remember myself, actually, I think it was about six, seven months into really diving into the course. I was very consistent with my working out. I had a, I had an eating regimen I followed. Like I was very disciplined because I'd learned that from my, my basketball kind of life up until that point of really being disciplined. So I had had like a year or two straight of already kind of working out. And, and here I was getting into the course as well, like really deeply. And that's when I just, I was starting to have these very profound uh, experiences of like seeing more of the darkness in my mind at that time. And, and I remember like, I just was having this little bit of this thought of like, huh, I don't know if this is for me anymore. And, and I remember at this one workout, I remember I was like half, halfway through my workout. And again, I had the same thing as Andy, like just this structured thing. And, and I was in my, I think third set of bench press and I was, I was just lifting it up. And I think I have, I was like halfway through my set and I just felt like, okay, I, I finished, you know, I put the, the bell, uh, the bar down, walked out of the gym, never went back. I just, I couldn't feel it. It was like this contrast thing of like, I'm going to throw up if I do one more like repetition of this. I, I can't do it. I just, I remember walking straight out, cleaning stuff. And then I just never ended up going back because there was this thing with the course where I was just starting to learn like freedom of the body or freedom of the mind for both you cannot have. And I was starting to see like, why am I working out? Like what is under this? because I'm actually not really having fun. This is kind of heavy. You know, some people, they can really feel like it's a meditation for them, but I was having to look much more closely at my mind. Like, what is, why am I doing this? I'm not happy. And this is really tough stuff. Like during every single day, you know, a regiment, I was just not having fun, but I was like so committed. And I didn't want to like quit. You know, I hated that quitting word. <laughs> But when I really started to look at my mind, I could see, wow, I just want to work out to get love. I just want to look good to attract someone else to get what I think is love. That's the only reason I'm working out, just to have a certain look to my body to basically manipulate another mind or try to manipulate someone else to be attracted. It's actually, it's, it's kind of dark when you really look at it. <laughs> 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 but it was it was good like I was happy because it was just like you know I was starting to really see a lot of these underpinnings in my mind and I was starting to see wow I can't just have the course as this hobby not that I even really thought of it that way but I started to see wow if I really want the experience of what A Course in Miracles is pointing to and this was really before even knowing so much about this community and everything this was maybe six or seven months before arriving at Living Miracles but I was starting to see, wow, I have to actually devote my life to this. You know, when I hear people or I've heard that question, like, how do I hear the Holy Spirit? Like, how do I know if it's the ego or Holy Spirit? My honest answer is, in my experience, it's not like, like, oh, just do this. For me, it's been, it's been this process. It's required devotion. I've had to devote my life to this. I've had to let go of everything else. I've had to really step in and let go of my previous desires like and just but it's been this process of clearing out like i've had to allow all these deep raw emotions up my first month here because i felt the safety for it i was at the monastery i arrived at the monastery in the middle of nowhere in utah the canyon but it was gorgeous you know i felt this attraction towards it you know like i like i feel like i'm supposed to go 
there was like this tickle in my heart, really. And my first month, like really, or first three weeks, like not kidding, I was breaking down, like having a huge breakdown at least, at least once a day, every day, like just totally falling apart and just having my brothers hold me like through it just so I could cry and I would have this experience where it'd be so intense, like my hands and face would start to like crumple up, but it was this real, like I felt the safety, like all my brothers here are devoted to this and I'm safe and I can allow myself to fall apart. That's been the gift of the monastery for me. And yeah, it's been this real experience of like, I need to step back. I need to like give my full life to this in order to experience. And I even had my friend, um, he, was, he used to be my basketball coach. His name is David West. And he, he sent me a, a book before. And he's like this devoted Christian friend of mine. And, and he sent me this he, every day, actually, for a while. I think maybe for two years now. Like, I've just seen his devotion where he prays for me every single day. He told me that at one point. And he sends me like this inspiring Christian image or uh, video or something every single day. Like, I wake up 4 a.m. It's right there waiting for me. And one of them he sent me, it was a few days ago, it was like, uh, I don't know if I'll remember exact word, but it was basically like, why do you want like full blessings from God as a partial Christian? Like you need to be a full Christian to get the full blessings from God. And I was like, yeah, like, you got to go for it fully. You know, you can't just, well, I was about to use another word, but you can't half, half do it. <laughs> And, and that's actually, it's been my experience where like, yeah, I, I remember just recently, like I was here in this devoted way with this community for about three years. And it was uh, this past October where I really was, you know, it's like I could feel in my mind, like something wasn't feeling right. Like, I, th I think I have like some other thing I need to do or like another step I need to take. And yet, personally that's the only way i can describe it personally i want to stay and live in this community like i want to be at the center be around everyone i just like i love it like i don't get it but something wasn't feeling right like i felt like i had another step to take not that anything's gone wrong and that's been this real experience where these prompts like especially when it's something that goes against what we seem to personally want that's where you can start to see the split in the mind. Like there's this thing that's pulling you and yet personally there's either fear or there's a seeming separate desire. And what I had to eventually like, you know, really join with my brothers here. And that's been the real gift of this community for me where it's, if I'm unsure, it's like, that's why our brothers are here to join with us because really there's only one Holy spirit. There's only one guidance. And if I'm really open to hearing the guidance, then I can join with a, with a trusted mighty companion or you know, brother or someone on my path um, that's also really devoted to this purpose, purpose and we will hear the same thing. We will both feel it. And that's what happened with me where I felt like I got this and then I remember joining, I think it was with Jason and he was hearing kind of the same thing for me. And so actually, you know, it was really this thing of I got to surrender because what I personally want is to stay but I have this thing pulling me and it ended up being just this real deepening for me because it was actually an answer to this prayer in my heart where I wanted to feel even more deeply like this trust. It all comes down to trust. And I really wanted to feel like, okay, it's really you that have been guiding me. you you know, you spare you. Jesus is what has, what has brought me to this community, brought me to the course. And I was seemingly pulling me out for whatever this next step is. I had no idea. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen to me. I was like, I just, I feel like I have to do a thing. And the only specific I was really getting was, potentially something why, but also I had a, this bank issue that kept reoccurring with my bank that was in Maryland. And I was all the way to Mexico and I had to, I had to go. I had to, to take care of this because it kept causing me issues. So that is what initially pulled me out. The next thing I know, it brings me to seeing uh, Andy's parents, you know, joining with them this very deep way about his life. And like, yeah, we're to be in here in full support of Andy and his path and just, and uh, then it brought me to a high school, five-year high school reunion, which was like this huge miraculous event that I wasn't sure if I'd go. I, I remember feeling like, oh, I think I want this, like to go to this, but you're going to have to give it to me because if it's just me going by myself, it's not going to be fun. You know, unless it's actually given and guided, it flows in easily. And, and that's what happened. And then this whole thing with Europe, which I may go into, but I just... <laughs> 
yeah, I have Andy on my mind right now, and I feel like, yes, Aaron, <laughs> I don't want to really take up the rest of this. So it's okay. I just, I think I just wanted to say that the, the Holy Spirit was really gentle, you know, and the Holy Spirit is gentle with everyone. So it's not like if you find yourself in a position where it feels like you're split. Like I know when I was, when I seemed to be very split in what I wanted, um, I know it felt really good for me to at least like really play out all the things that I really thought that I wanted before I really gave my hundred percent to Holy Spirit, because, you know, it feels like I came to this world for a reason seemingly. And it's like something here might've attracted me. So let me see if anything that I like is actually going to satisfy me. So I feel like I went through like a few years of trying to do that where it was with the business, real estate, you know, um, dating and girls and sex. And I basically tried everything that I thought I wanted um, because I wanted to see like, is this it? And I feel like at some point I burned out or it felt so painful where I was like, okay, it's obvious what I want now. And that was kind of like, like with the gym, that was the point where it was so painful that I just couldn't. I went for that walk and I had that experience. And then um, that really confirmed to me like which direction I should go. And um, yeah, just I wanted to share another experience of guidance that felt really inspiring. I, like I said before, depending on your desire to hear the Holy Spirit, that's how strong you'll hear it. And so I remember I went with a friend once in the park and he had this call for love and we were joining because he just went through a breakup and um, I was basically going to just, just extend with him. And we went to this park and I had never gone there before, but we were just walking through and I was just sharing everything that I had learned on, on the path so far. And he was a Course in Miracles student as well. And, and then on the way back, we kind of got lost where it was a park I had never been to and he had never been through that way at home. And we went through a few crossroads and I remember we went to, it was like a fork in the road and neither of us knew which direction to go. And I was just like left. And, and then we went left and then we went through another fork in the road and I was like, yeah, it's right. And then we went right. And then another one. And I was like, right. And then, and then I realized like neither of us had any idea where we were, but I just felt that like intuitively that's where the Holy spirit was telling me, me to go. And I think it felt so clear in my mind when I heard the left and right is because I had no I had no agenda or no desire against the Holy Spirit because I was really there just to join with my brother. And, <laughs> and so I could really hear if it was a left or right, or I was really tuned into the Holy Spirit because I really didn't know anything. So I think that situation was one of those where it's like, it's really helpful to know that I don't know anything. So I will follow you now. And I feel like being in that I don't know mind really helps yeah. to hear the Holy Spirit as well. Oh, it's perfect, Andy. It's perfect. I love the context you just gave. Because, yeah, it's really a lot of this is letting go. And this, it requires that I don't know. I think we were talking about that. And, and I just even had the thought that, yeah, actually, I had as well a similar experience uh, when I was in Europe. Because, first of all, I was deadly afraid of traveling or maybe before okay it's it washed a bit as the years went on but i was i had this fear of traveling so that was part of this deepening of trust with the spirit because i was like okay if you guide this i'm i'm willing to try this but like you've got to show me the way because you know i i don't know what i'm doing i've rarely traveled on my own or in general like my life just uh you know usually parents are buying me tickets and you know arranging everything for me and so then I had this experience of where now it seemed to be me having to arrange everything. And I remember, you know, just the whole Europe thing, like not knowing the language and uh, the money and everything. It was just this big, like, okay, spirit, you got to show me because I don't know what I'm doing here. And um, I remember the specific day when I was being hosted by one of my friends in, in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, it was back in, in December and they were, it was, it was a day after Christmas and they were going to go meet some family friends. And so I was like, hmm, well, let's see what, 
in for me. And I started to hear, I think I was supposed to go to Amsterdam because I'd never been. And I was just like, there's something about Amsterdam where I felt like I wanted to check it out. So I ended up taking this train ride all the way to Amsterdam. And when I got there, I, there was this place called the Trust Cafe. And I, I wanted to go meet the people there because I'd heard about them. And, and so I had this wonderful, just joining with them, sharing about my life experience with David. And because David had gone there with some of the elders of this community at some point. And then I remember I was like, well, I still have some, a couple hours before I should, I feel to head back. And, and <laughs> I just remember being like, okay, well, I feel to walk to this park and someone had told me about it and I knew it was starting to get kind of dark and um, lighting wise. And I just had this prompt of like, well, I feel like I want to go back, but I don't want to take a bus ride. That just feels kind of boring. <laughs> you know, that doesn't feel inspiring. And I heard, follow the light your way all the way back to the central station. I was like, huh, that feels fun. So I started walking the streets and I would walk only on the streets that had these big Christmas lights all the way along. And so I'd be following it and then there'd be, you know, I'd be, oh, now it's right and then left and right. And then I know some streets would have these different lights and I'd follow the, I felt to like follow the brightest ones and I followed it. And I was amazed that by the end of it, I found myself right at Central Station just by following the light, which felt very symbolic for me. It's just like, I don't know where I'm going, but the light is leading the way. <laughs> so I just, I remember th that having like this powerful experience on me of just like, I can keep trusting that. And I had many of these miracles of just like it becoming very obvious. Like that's been, I'd say that's maybe the most helpful thing I could share about my experience with guidance, which I've heard David and many of the people listening to talk about, where it's really this prayer of make it obvious. Because in that, there's an admission that I don't know and I'm willing to follow. And I, I'm really willing to follow because it needs to be obvious. I need it to be absolutely obvious in a way that I can recognize. So I've, I've said that. And even every day now, or almost every day now, I still pray, like, make it obvious I'm supposed to be here right now. You know, I want to have the experience that I am where I need to be right now. I want to have the miracles. I need you to show me. I need every day to be convinced. It's not, it's not good enough to have an idea of like, oh, this is good. Like I want every day to be washed in miracles. Like that's my prayer. Like show me, guide me through it all. And really there is something I posted on Facebook, which is what is guided is provided. I, I heard Kirsten say that. I don't know if she was the first, but <laughs> I quoted her. What is guided is provided. And that's divine providence. And actually this next month's online retreat is on divine providence. And that's been really the experience that really it becomes very simple. Like whatever you feel is easily coming into your life or into your mind at the moment, that's, you know, whatever's being provided easily in the moment, that's what's guided, you know? And, and then if you're unsure, then that's where you kind of connect to my companions, but it's, it actually does become kind of easier and easier. It's like a muscle you strengthen, you know, that's been my experience of guidance. Like the more you experiment, the more you're willing to fail, so to speak, but really try to follow what you're feeling with this honest prayer of I'm here only to be truly helpful or I'm willing to follow, you'll hear the guidance. Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> so I think we're just about finished here. I think we have like 30 seconds left, but thank <laughs> you all for joining us. And our next show is in two weeks, I believe. And yep. yeah, the 29th, I think. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Now we're going to pass it on to Kristen and Peter now. Thank you. Love you, brother. Love you, Nicholas. Yeah. <laughs>